I'm Eve Mosier, like it says on the board. I want to um, try a little bit of an experiment. You guys have been sitting here all day listening to presentation after presentation. It's a ton of information. So I'm going to give you 30 seconds of silence, and I want you to reflect on your favorite word. And we're going to start now. Okay, now I want you to turn to someone next to you and tell them that favorite word. <laughs> okay, that's it. That's all we have time for. <laughs> I just wanted to give everyone um, a little taste of... Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Didn't expect it to go on for too long. Okay, I wanted to give everyone a taste of sort of experiential learning, because I'm going to talk about that later in my talk. Um, but I also just want to mention something before I start into the talk. Um, I came here, kind of rushed on the subway and ran in the humid weather with a coat on. I was a little overdressed, and I went to the green room, and I grabbed a glass of water, and I drank the whole thing down, and now I really have to pee. So I'm just putting that out there, and we'll reflect back on that later as well. There actually is a point for me telling you that. Um, but the actual topic, or the name of my presentation, is why build one green roof of a thousand square feet when you can build a thousand green roofs of one square foot? Or, the other title, if they, build, if they come, I will build it. The topic of this presentation is a, a project that's ongoing right now called Seeding the City. Um, Seeding the City is really a project about potential. It's the potential for communities to build networks of people who are interested in um, remediation, env urban environmental issues, and sustainable city initiatives. It's the potential for people to actually participate in creating a sustainable city. And it's um, the potential for art to take on the role of creating change within an, uh, the urban environment. So the way that it works is that I have found a few initial sites and in exchange for me installing, actually it's four square feet of green roof on their rooftop, they have to give me the information of two to three other people in their neighborhood who are interested in participating in this project. Then those other people, so here we're connecting to the, the second level of people, those secondary people have to, have to give me two to three more people who are interested in participating in the project. And it's sort of a so on and so on kind of situation. A friend of mine describes it as a green pyramid scheme. So we create this broad network of people who have little modules of green rooftop on their roofs across the New York City. Um, why do I create these kind of projects? Well, I'm creating projects that allow people to engage in an actual experience. So just as I allowed you guys to share your favorite word, um, that was sort of an experience that you're going to actually kind of, it's going to be memorable. And you might take it with you beyond this room, that you learned a new word or oh, someone had a similar word to yours, or oh, that's going to be my new favorite word now. Um, it's creating an experience that has a long-lasting effect. Um, it also is giving the audience power to um, engage their community in um, a, so, an, about urban environmental issues and sustainability. So I'm giving them the tools to go out and educate and communicate with their own neighborhood. It is also creating an opportunity for them to play an active role in creating a more sustainable city. And finally, um, they're the ones who are determining the success of the project. So I've put the success of the project in the hands of the participants. And that is a big challenge for me. Um, so why do I do the kind of work that um, is out in communities? Well, I'm interested in reaching a really broad audience. I think environmentalism is something that needs to reach beyond a sort of self-selected audience that attends environmental lectures or that you know, is interested in reading Sierra Magazine. Um, so I'm specifically seeking projects that go out and find their own diverse community across all sorts of different boundaries within New York City. I also really enjoy creating projects that 
provide a moment of surprise within your daily routine. So I'm hoping that because I told you guys that I really need to pee, you might actually remember that because you weren't expecting it. So I'm doing projects that are happening out in communities in the hopes that someone will come across it and they weren't expecting it. And this opens up their ability to receive information about a complex project such as environmental issues. There have actually been studies done that say that our neurons fire faster if we come across something in an unexpected manner. So of course, when I'm working in any kind of situation where it's out in the public like this and I'm relying on other people to make the project su successful, there are challenges. Um, some of those challenges include actually accessing that truly diverse community. Um, I have certain friends who are interested in having green roofs, but how do I reach across to people that I don't know? How do I reach people in South Brooklyn um, who I don't have a relationship with? Well, I form deep relationships with environmental organizations or community organizations that exist within those communities and rely on them to make those connections for me. Um, I also have found it challenging to encourage people to educate their neighbors. And so I try and create methods where it's fun or um, easy to do that by providing them tools or providing experiences which are more fun than sort of this lecturing about environmental issues. Um, and then the biggest challenge for me personally is relying on others for the success of a project. I've had to really let go and let other people drive the project and that is probably the, for a control freak like me that's really hard to do. Um, I wanted to end very quickly with some thoughts um, that were kind of inspirational to me. And the first is a quote from Suzanne Lacey, who is the author of Mapping the Terrain. And she says, the most, most successful public art projects are ones where the artist works as a kind of agent or facilitator and is connected to or connects themselves. <laughs> <laughs>